The Outer Banks Beach is a surfer's paradise, but for homeowners here, life is too much on the edge. This part of North Carolina's coastline is one of America's starkest examples of global warming. The beach wasn't here, the beach was way out there. This was all, uh, this was asphalt up in here, and then there was a row of houses all down here. This aerial view shows just how close the sea is to swallowing yet more homes. Roque San Sada rents out summer cottages on the coast, and he wonders how long he will be in business. And some people come to rent my cottages, and they said if I wanted a cruise, I'd rent it a ship. Coastal regulators have allowed bags of sand to shore up houses for the past two years. The stopgap measure was meant to buy homeowners time to find more permanent solutions. But on May 1st, authorities say beaches must be clear of the exposed bags. Like Gail Jones, who built her house in 1974, most residents are struggling to find answers. I feel very sad. I'm very sorry. And I really don't know what to do. I don't know. Her choices are all unappealing. Regulators say she can move her house back from the water's edge, move house completely, or possibly the cheapest option is the following. Leave the house where it is, try and utilize it as long as you can, and then uh, when it eventually washes away, uh, file a claim with the national flood insurance. The only long-term solution is to dump sand onto the beach, but because of the cost, it's got lots of opponents. The government has already spent millions to finance the protection and reconstruction of Outer Bank properties. But if no better option is found, several hotels and 200 homes could one day disappear.